Alrighty, investment sale. So this one is one of the leading dice in the race to be known as the worst custom dice in Golden Gears. I think that it's actually fighting for the top spot according to a lot of people up against Amber Barrier. So what makes investment sale bad? Well, first of all, it's a knowledge type dice, which means that it wants you to spread knowledge around the field. So that in itself isn't so bad, but rather the issue here is that it then wants you to collapse those knowledge tiles in order to gain the path boost. Now, this goes against how most of us would play the game since typically you would want to duplicate powerful tiles and with that apply knowledge to them before stepping on them to gain your bonuses. But now with the investment die, you actually want to avoid knowledge tiles in order to let them collapse. And as a byproduct of this, you find that you have less moves throughout the run leading to less blessing and so leading to less power overall. Now, it does try to balance it out by giving you 50 fragments for every knowledge tile that you collapse, and then it doubles that if it's an elite, reward, or an adventure, and then it doubles that again if it has a beacon on it. So technically, you do get 200 fragments off of a double reward with knowledge. But then here's the thing, if you consider that a double reward domain could potentially give you two gold blessings, which when converted into fragments hold a value of 600 fragments, then getting 200 fragments and a single stack of path boost doesn't really seem that great now, does it? So with that in mind, let's go over the die faces and I'll talk a little bit about how I choose to approach this custom dice. We're going to be going with an even 50-50 split between knowledge generation and tile duplication. So focusing too much on the gimmick of the dice and letting everything collapse is actually a huge bait and one of the main reasons why people struggle with this dice. So your primary goal should always be on getting the right blessing combinations to get your build online and stacking path boost should come secondary to that. So when we play this dice, we're actually going to be ignoring the fragment mechanic entirely. It's a nice thing to have in the background, but we don't really care about beacon generation at all. So our first dice is going to be deduction. Three knowledges onto domains that don't yet have knowledge. So super straightforward and a really great knowledge seeder. There's not much more for me to say on this one. Then we've got general inspiration. So this dice is found on almost every custom dice loadout. It's just that good. I classify this as a tile duplication dice, but it also acts as a knowledge spreader. That said though, we want to be using this dice for its duplication abilities. So what this means is that when we use it on high value tiles, we do it with the aim of stepping on them later, not to let them collapse. Then we've got knowledge principle. So this one is another really great knowledge spreader that really only kicks into gear once you've got three or more knowledge tiles on the field. So the more you have, the more effective it becomes. But keep in mind that its spread is random, which means that it can overlap with existing knowledge tiles. Now, onto our purples. We've got General Exponential Explosion, another one of our knowledge spreaders. So this one is really good for early knowledge seeding as it can give you three knowledge tiles with two of them being collapsible on the next move. And then we've got General Counteract, which is another popular tile duplication face. It lets you pick any tile and then duplicate it to an adjacent domain. So this one is quite powerful as it always spawns adjacent, meaning that you can build a path of valuable tiles for you to walk down. And then last of all, I've got a blue face here as it's our third tile duplication dice that we have available to us. So this one does come in handy in a pinch as it does let you duplicate the tile that you're currently standing on, which means that it gives you another chance to spread that tile if it was the last one on the map. All right, so that's the quick guide. So now let's move on to the playthrough with commentary. So I actually left this one for the release of Adventuring since I was kind of getting bored of running the same old comps. And now that I have him though, I thought this would be the perfect showcase to show how he performs in a preservation team. So you may notice here that I am running this team with Akron and she is E6, but I do only have her here for the technique to one-shot enemies since I'm just really lazy to go through the battles. So the plan here is to go through plane one with Acheron just popping things and we'll then pull her out and replace her with March 7th so that we can see how the team performs against the plane two and plane three bosses where it actually counts. So I've always been a big believer in shields of high conundrums in Golden Gear runs. I have said many times in the past that I honestly think that Japart is top tier for Golden Gears, even above Fushuan, simply for the fact that he's able to eliminate one shots entirely. So now with Adventuring here, he's really just a more reliable Japart. So this should go pretty smoothly. The funniest thing about this run is that you'll see at the end of the video what my FMC and March 7 are actually wearing. They're pretty much in literal garbage rainbow pieces. March 7th doesn't even have a sphere equipped and FMC is missing a rope. So this run is really just adventuring solo carrying with the run made there to apply some bonus damage. He's really that good. So okay, back to what I was saying earlier in the quick guide. 
The aim of the game here is actually going to be focusing on getting our build online. And since we're playing Preservation, that's going to be focusing on Quake. So if you're playing this under the Remembrance Path, then you want the Core Disassociation Blessings. Or if you're playing Erudition, then you want to make sure that you get all of your Brain and Revat Blessings, and so on and so forth. So with this understanding, we're going to be actively trying to duplicate Reward Domains so that we can pick up our three key Gold Preservation Blessings. And while we do that, we are going to generate as many Knowledge Tiles as we can, but we're not going to shy away from stepping on knowledge tiles, especially if it's a tile that can potentially give us blessings, since we want to make sure that we get all of our key blessings to ramp up that quake damage. Okay, so let's just have a little recap on what's happened so far in plane one. So I got fairly lucky at the start and I had two reward domains, which meant that I did manage to nab a metastatic field blessing, which does 340% of your shield as quake damage whenever you get hit. But then as you can see here, I landed on an occurrence and promptly lost it. That said, I did manage to pick up a few good blue blessings along the way, so it wasn't all that bad. And then we get into the plane one boss here with 48% shield gain, which works out to be six knowledge collapses, which isn't amazing, but isn't too terrible either, seeing as we did a total of six moves in plane one. So with the plane one boss, I always do just say that he's really just an overgrown elite enemy. So I didn't actually find a chance to use a downloader in this plane to swap in March 7. So we do go ahead and fight him with Akron in the team, but it really doesn't change anything here since he would have died with March in the team anyway. And so from the plane one boss rewards, we do manage to get our metastatic field blessing back again. So now it's just a matter of getting that last residence transfer blessing before we start focusing on our blue quake blessings. Okay, so now onto plane two. So here we start in a respite. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to download March 7th and have her swap in later on. For now though, I do leave Akron on my team so that I can clear enemies just a little bit quicker. With only one gold preservation blessing left to pick up, I'm fairly confident that I'll get it eventually, so now I instead start turning my focus on nabbing blue blessings. So these three combat blessings right at the start here are going to be a perfect opportunity for that, especially with an Akron on the team so that we can clear them really quickly. The great thing about them is that they also come with an added bonus of giving out Curios 2 with the Curio Trotter Beacons, so that's a win in my books. Like I did say earlier though, if we were to put knowledge on these tiles and have them collapse, I could be getting 100 fragments and a stack of path boost from them, but personally when you think about it, I find that getting a curio and between 1 and 3 blessings from each of these tiles is far more valuable than 100 fragments. Okay, so I'm not going to subject you guys to too much more of my yapping in plane 2, so we'll start to speed through the next few tiles. But what I want to do make a note of here is the decision making that we've got going on here as we try to hit any tiles that are guaranteed to give us blessings along the way. So these are primarily going to be combat tiles. Unlike most of my runs, I choose not to zigzag as much here as I'm trying to collect a few more additional stacks of path boost. I pretty much opt to skip most occurrences, especially if they've got knowledge on them as they don't guarantee me any blessings and I would much rather get the fragments and path boost from them instead. As we do make our way towards the plane 2 boss, we do get fairly lucky in that we're able to hit quite a few Curio Trotter combats, which does net us a fairly decent 6 Curios for our efforts. We do end up reaching the plane 2 boss with a total of 13 stacks of path boost for a total of 104 additional shield gain, and I do choose to fight the Ebon D for the plane 2 boss. So, now that we're at the boss, I do end up swapping out Acheron for my March 7th. Frankly, if I did have a Japard, I would have loved to swap him in instead, but unfortunately he's the only standard character that I'm currently missing. So, here we go. Adventuring and Ron May along with a super scuffed March 7th and FMC against the Plane 2 boss. Adventuring shields are just so busted that I don't think there was ever a moment in which I was ever in danger. In fact, I just let this fight autoplay while I went out to get a snack. So, I'll let the video play out here if you're interested to see how it all plays out. Otherwise, you can use the chapter buttons down below to jump to plane 3. I'm on guard. <laughs> Here. Try that again. All right. You can't run. Watch this awesome move. Spin freely. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Try that again. Oh, we'll be 
swept away by the wind. swept away by the wind. swept away by the wind. Alrighty, so with plane 3, there's really not much to it. The most valuable tiles here are going to be either the reward or the intracognition, depending on what you're after. So if you're still missing gold blessings, then duplicating reward domains are going to be your best bet, since they do have a chance of spawning with either a Knights of Beauty, Universal Dancer, Caustic Beauty Bug, or Cosmic Altruist, all of which will guarantee you a shot at a gold blessing at this stage. If you don't care for gold blessings however, then the intracognition is the way to go. It rewards you with one blessing and one curio, along with 50 fragments. So this is the same as what you would expect to get from a perfect clear of an adventure domain, except that it just straight up gives it to you, making it a no-brainer to pick over an adventure. And so here on screen we see that I step into the plane 3 boss battle with a total of 15 stacks of path boost for 120% shield boost along with 44 total blessings, 24 of which are the preservation blessings that I needed. I opted to go with the swarm bugs for this fight and once again we leave the battle running on auto since there's absolutely zero risk of us ever dying. So once again I'll leave the battle to play out here so you can see how preservation plays. It may not be the fastest kill ever but it sure as hell is safe. Join me. 
yourself? Watch your head. Spend freely. Or maybe I'll take it off. It's on me. All will be swept away by the wind. Eternal. No dirty tricks. Watch your head. Maybe I'll take it off. Oh. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. <laughs> Watch your head. Freely. Yeah. All will be swept away by the wind. Maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. No 
dirty tricks. Watch your head. No dirty tricks. Enjoying yourself? All will be swept away by the wind. Spend freely. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. It's on me. Eternal. No dirty tricks. Oh. Watch your head. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Oh. Watch this awesome move. Watch your head. You can't run! Oh. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. I suppose. Existence is unity. Every petal. All will be swept away by the wind.